One of the most prominent stories following the Second World War was the fact that many of the Nazis who had committed the horrors of the Holocaust seemingly escaped justice. It was rare that many members of the SS, who were the perpetrators of the Holocaust, faced their fate. However, the most prominent case post-war of a man being brought to justice was Adolf Eichmann. Eichmann would be hauled in front of a trial after his capture in 1960 and was taken to Jerusalem, where his publicised trial attracted millions of viewers. Eventually, for his role in the mass murder during the Holocaust, he was sentenced to death. So join us today as we look at the justified execution of Adolf Eichmann, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. One of the most notorious names associated with the Holocaust is Adolf Eichmann. Eichmann was born on the 19th of March 1906, and would work for a short period after school at his father's mining company. His family had moved to Austria, and he transitioned into life being a travelling oil salesman in 1927. He would travel throughout Austria and other territories during this time, but he would also become exposed about the politics and beliefs of the Nazi party. He would be advised by a close family friend and local SS leader, Ernst Kautenbrunner, to join the Nazi party. Interestingly, Kautenbrunner would be executed at the Nuremberg Trials. On the 1st of April 1932, he would join the Austrian branch, and then seven months later was confirmed as a member of the SS. He did lose his job after the Nazis seized power in January 1933, and he returned to Germany after the Nazi party were banned in Austria. He worked at Dachau concentration camp, but then requested to be moved to the SD. He was eventually accepted into this, and was initially tasked with confiscating objects associated with the Freemasons. Eichmann then exhibited these with many high-ranking Nazis attending the exhibition, and he rose throughout the ranks of the SS. At the time, the Nazis were using violence and pressure to encourage Jews to leave Germany and emigrate to different countries. With this, around 250,000 Jews left Germany between 1933 and the start of the Second World War. Eichmann was transitioned into the Jewish department at the Berlin headquarters of the SS, and would take an interest in Jewish affairs, learning Hebrew and Yiddish. He gained a reputation as a specialist in Jewish matters, and through promotions rose even further up the SS hierarchy. In 1938 he was sent to Vienna to help organise and facilitate Jewish emigration from Austria after the country had been annexed by Germany. When he left this post in Vienna, around 100,000 Jews had already left the country legally. As the Second World War broke out, Eichmann would transition into a deportation specialist rather than emigration. German policies towards Jews became incredibly strict, with many being deported forcibly and threatened. In October 1939, Eichmann was posted to oversee the command for the Reich Central Office for Jewish emigration for the entire German Empire. He would during his time organise the deportation of thousands of Jews into ghettos and other areas, including concentration camps and labour camps. Many would be sent to places with no food and water, being forced to fend for themselves. It would be Eichmann's office that would organise the deportations, with thousands being kept in horrific conditions in ghettos, which would have awful overcrowding, poor food supplies and terrible sanitation. The death rates inside the ghettos were incredibly high, and it was Eichmann's command which oversaw these conditions, and also the eventual deportations to camps such as Auschwitz. Eichmann's role as overseeing deportations was incredibly well documented, and the logistics of the deportations were planned in minute detail. He worked with other agencies that seized Jewish houses and property, and he arranged the deportation of thousands of Roma gypsies, and his office benefited financially from the property seized by those persecuted. So Eichmann was the cog who was instrumental in the suffering of millions. He was tasked with forcing people out of their homes and sending them to ghettos and then the camps. In 1942, things changed with deportation of the Jews when the 1C conference was hosted by Reinhard Heydrich. Following the conference, the final solution to the Jewish question was placed into action, in which the Nazis orchestrated the mass murder of the Jews of Europe. Before this, Eichmann produced a set of statistics based on how many Jews from different countries could be massacred. Under Eichmann's supervision, huge deportations would take place following the conference, almost immediately to the extermination camps. Eichmann would oversee the transportation of millions of Jews to the death camps, 
where they were murdered within minutes of them arriving. He kept a close log of this and carried out his duty with ruthless efficiency. After Germany invaded Hungary, Eichmann arrived in the country and set to work on ordering those Jews captured straight to Auschwitz to be used as forced labour or to be sent straight to their deaths. Eichmann provided the commandant of Auschwitz, Rudolf Hirsch, with instructions as to how to implement the final solution using the gas chambers. Eichmann even ordered extra trains to be used for the victims to be sent to Auschwitz, such was the need to exterminate these poor victims so quickly. On the 24th of December 1944, Eichmann left Budapest after organising more deportations, just before the Soviets arrived. He returned to Berlin, ordering many of his documents to be burned, and following this fled Germany, heading to Austria as the war ended. Eichmann was captured after the war finished, by US forces, but spent time in different SS camps, however had false papers stating that his name was Otto Eckmann. He escaped from a work detachment when he realised his identity had been discovered, and then went under more false names and quickly relocated. In 1948, he obtained a permit to head to Argentina, under the false name Ricardo Clement, using the Nazi rat lines to escape. He arrived in Buenos Aires on the 14th of July 1950, and worked as a department head for Mercedes-Benz. As stories of the Holocaust were unravelled after the Second World War, stories of Eichmann and the man who prided himself on the efficient slaughter of many would emerge, but Ricardo Clement or Eichmann lived a seemingly normal life in Argentina. In 1957, a German prosecutor informed Israel that Eichmann was living in Argentina, and agents from the Israeli intelligence service Mossad would arrive to hunt him down. In early 1960, Eichmann was located in the San Fernando area of Buenos Aires under his false name. Argentina had a history of refusing extradition requests, so the decision was made by the Israelis to simply snatch Eichmann and bring him to Israel for trial. Over a period of time, the officers of Mossad would stalk their prey, noticing how he arrived home from work by bus every day at the same time. They planned to seize him as he was walking beside an open field near to the bus stop whilst heading home. On the day of his arrest, Eichmann did get on a later bus and was wrestled to the ground by Mossad agents later on. He was then taken to several safe houses and held for nine days until his identity was confirmed. He was then sedated and flown back to Israel, being smuggled out of the country. The Eichmann trial was held on the 11th of April 1961 and it was held at the Jerusalem District Court. It took 56 days for the prosecution to outline their evidence, using witnesses and implicating evidence to try and secure a guilty verdict. Eichmann was charged under the Nazi collaborators and Nazi punishment law, allowing Israeli courts to punish perpetrators of the Holocaust. He was indicted on 15 counts, including crimes against the Jewish people and crimes against humanity. He was also charged with being an SA, SD and Gestapo member. The biggest amount of evidence levelled against Eichmann was the fact he had worked to expel Jews from Germany and had participated in the deportations, resulting in the mass murder of millions. He did gain the nickname from this, the Architect of the Holocaust. Eichmann was held within a glass booth inside of the courtroom to prevent his assassination. He stated how he was simply following orders and was just a cog in the machinery of destruction. He did admit his guilt about the arrangements of transport of millions of Jews, but did not feel guilty about the consequences and the deaths. His plea that he was only following orders was not accepted, and it was proven that he was a key perpetrator of the genocide of the Jews. For this, on December 12, 1961, he was found guilty, and three days later was sentenced to death. An appeal was rejected, and for this Eichmann's sentence was carried out. Eichmann was transferred to Ramla prison to await his execution. He was kept under a close guard of 22 men who were carefully selected. He was kept here for around six months and was closely guarded to ensure he did not take his own life. Food was even brought to him in sealed containers to avoid poisoning, with the guards trying his food before. The prison service had begun to find someone to carry out the sentence of death, with Shalom Nagar being chosen a former paratrooper to carry out the job. They wanted an ordinary man to administer justice and the suffering for those during the Holocaust onto Eichmann. 
Also, another man was commissioned to make a huge oven, capable of being able to burn a body for cremation, with this being brought to the prison as well. On the day of Eichmann's execution, streets around the prison were cordoned off. Shalom Nagar felt like he had won the lottery being the executioner. On the 1st of June 1962, Eichmann's sentence was carried out. He spent the last few hours of his life with a priest and was given a glass of wine. He was then taken up to the execution chamber where a specially constructed gallows had been made and he was taken up to the stairs and had the noose placed around his neck, standing above a specially made trap door. According to official reports, there were supposedly two people who pulled the lever, executing the war criminal. This was to ensure that neither would know whose hand killed Eichmann. Nagar's account stated that he looked Eichmann dead in the eyes who refused to have his face covered during his execution. He was even allegedly wearing his slippers. Then Nagar pulled the lever and he fell dangling by his neck. After an hour, two men went to release the body. It was said that his face was white as chalk, his eyes were bulging and his tongue was dangling out. The rope rubbed the skin off his neck and his tongue and chest were covered in blood. Eichmann's corpse was then taken to the oven, which had been specially made, and his body was cremated, with his ashes being scattered beyond the Israeli territorial waters, so that they would not defile the Holy Land. Adolf Eichmann was the architect of the Holocaust, who carried out his horrific duties with ruthless efficiency. Eichmann was known for efficiently organising the mass killing of millions, and he took great pride in this. He was an evil man who was ingrained in Nazi race laws, and wished to inflict mass suffering on the Jews of Europe. After the Second World War, justice would finally catch up with Eichmann, with his capture by Mossad and subsequent execution. The architect of the Holocaust definitely got eventually what he deserved. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.